A lot of the people make a fuzz. They make a big issue out of this situation. You'll find people sitting in the masjid, leaning on a pillar, for example, or on um, a cupboard that has Quran, and the elders come to him, say, what are you doing? Move, move, move away from here. Said, what, what am I doing? Said, you're disrespecting the Quran. Said, where is the Quran? It's behind you. There's nothing behind me. It's a cupboard. It's the bookshelf. And I'm giving my back to it. Said, no, no, inside there is the Quran. This is disrespectful. Okay, you move somewhere else. You get pain in your feet. You extend your feet towards the Qibla. Elders come, come on, remove your feet. <laughs> remove it what? It's not detachable. What do you mean remove my feet? So no, no, you cannot point your feet to the Qibla. Why not? Say, this is disrespectful to the Qibla. SubhanAllah. And if I turn my back to the Qibla, so this is respectful to the Qibla. And if I go sideways, my feet would be pointing at someone praying. It's respectful to the person praying. What should I do? Amputate? This is not logical. It is not found in Islamic teachings. Yes, if someone says to me, put your Quran next to your feet, you're on the ground, your foot is here and the Quran is here. This is a bit disrespect. Though there is no intent of humiliating or, or disrespecting the Quran. I wouldn't say it's haram, but it's inappropriate. But to stay in your room, and my room is four meters by four meters or by five meters. And at the end of the room, there's a shelf with the Quran. And my bed is to that direction and my feet are facing the Quran. And people say, no, this is haram. Why is it haram? By your logic, if I'm sitting on a couch and my brother who is a hafiz is sitting on the floor, I should go and sit on the floor as well because he's a hafiz. I'm disrespecting the Quran. This can never end. And this is all baseless and is not related to Islam. Sometimes we tend to make an issue out of nothing and we base our arguments. We fight over them, which was never done by the Prophet nor his companions. You're disrespecting the Quran. Akhi, the Prophet والسلام, used to place his head in Mother Aisha's lap. He used to lie down and he used to recite the Quran. Would you dare and say that this is respectful? This would be blasphemy. It will be kufr if you call this disrespectful. So sometimes we have to rethink things over and we have to use what is known as the Islamic glasses, spectacles. You put them on, you see things from the perspective of Islam. You take them off, it's worldly things. You see it like everyone else. This is what differentiates us between Muslims and non-Muslims, practicing and non-practicing. That we look at things from a different perspective. Everything has to be based on Quran and the Sunnah. So for example, I'm sitting in the masjid, I'm reading the Quran. I come to an ayah that has prostration of recitation. So I fold the Quran, I put it on the ground and I prostrate. Someone next to me holds the Quran up. I finish my prostration and I sit down, he gives it to me. Muzakallah khair, but why? He said, no, no, it's disrespectful to put the Quran on the ground. Says who? He said, yeah, because your feet are on the ground. Okay, I have no intention to disrespect or humiliate the Quran. I love the Quran. I recite the Quran every single day. What are you talking about? You can't be more Roman than the Roman. You cannot say that this is halal or haram without having the proper evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. This is your own preference. If you think that this is inappropriate, don't extend your feet in the masjid. This is up to you. Don't place the Quran on the ground. This is up to you. But you have no right to tell me what to do and what not to do without proper evidence from the Quran and from the Sunnah. I have the Quran. It's a book where Allah's words are printed on. Some scholars say that it is totally prohibited to put anything other than the word of Allah. And this was reported by Abdullah bin Mas'ud and that they say that keep the Quran pure from any other uh, um, marks except that which is related to the Quran. Some scholars say, no, it's totally permissible to write commentary. So I pass by uh, an ayah in Surah Yusuf, Lawla uh, Tufannidun. What is the meaning of Tufannidun? I have no idea. I look in the tafsir and say, ah, okay. I write one, two, three, four, five, six uh, meanings of it. 
so that next time I read it, I can understand and relate to it. And they say that there are so many copies of the Quran that has commentary on the edges. And some of the companions used to do this as well. They used to write at the side of the pages, which were usually written either on uh, uh, leaves of trees or on the shoulder blades of animals. So it's an issue of dispute. I personally am inclined to say that I do not like even putting a marker on a verse of the Quran or putting a mark or writing something on the side. There are stick uh, notes, there are pads where you can write, there are books that are uh, uh, specialized for you to write your notes in and related to the Quran, but I'd rather that you keep the Quran pure, clean, with nothing written on it. Because I've seen in the circles of tahfidh a lot of abuse by the students, young youngsters, they write their names, on the cover, okay, the cover is not the Quran. And then if you find hearts with an arrow penetrating, and you find marks uh, uh, within the pages of the Quran, and maybe some of the ayahs are highlighted with pencils, and it is a form of disrespect to the Quran. Not that it is haram, it can be done. But my own personal view is that I would never ever do anything like this to the Quran and Allah Azza wa knows best. And yes, it is permissible to recite the Quran while sitting, while lying down, while reclining, while walking, while exercising. It is okay to recite the Quran in these conditions, particularly if you're reclining and paying attention because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Imran in ayah number 191, ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار so in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise those who reflect and ponder the creation of Allah because the previous ayah says إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the day and the night there are signs proofs for people who ponder and reflect for people of intellect who are they? the following ayah describes them as يذكرون الله الذين يذكرون الله those who remember Allah who praise Allah and glorify Allah قياما while standing وقعودا while sitting down وعلى جنوبهم while reclining on their side ويتفكرون and they think about في خلق السماوات والأرض they think about the creation of the heavens and the earth so mere uh, ذكر الله عز وجل the remembrance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى while reclining is permissible add to that there is a sound hadith which is narrated by the mother of the believers عائشة رضي in this hadith she said and the hadith is collected by al-Bukhari wa Muslim كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يتكئ في حجري وأنا حائض ثم يقرأ القرآن so this is like a straightforward reference in this regard she said may Allah be pleased with her the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recline and he would put his head in my lap and he would recite the Quran in this condition while I would be in my mental.